Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Welcome to Around the Peninsula. It doesn't get any more beautiful than this in Rancho Palos Verdes, a gorgeous day. I am standing at the Lower Filiorum property just off PV Drive South, where the city and the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy just held an incredible press conference with some wild news. That is right, they have just kicked off the Go Wild for the Peninsula, a $30 million fundraising campaign to bring the community together to create a 96 acre wildlife corridor for the community to enjoy. Here's highlights from today's press conference. My name is Adrian Mohan. I'm the executive director of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. And where we're standing right now, gathered today on this promontory, uh, signifies the heart of this iconic coastal scenery that everyone comes to cherish when they think of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And from this special place today, the Land Conservancy and the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and partners in protecting this coastal environment announced this once in a lifetime opportunity to create a 96 acre wildlife corridor and protect this land in perpetuity. <laughs> No longer will this land suffer the threat of bulldozers and development. This landscape represents renewed hope for wildlife and a healthy environment for generations to enjoy. It's the Land Conservancy's mission and our passion to create a healthier, more biodiverse and sustainable peninsula. For nearly 35 years, we've worked with peninsula cities and members of the community to protect 1,700 acres across the peninsula, restore 250 acres of native habitat, and provide enriching educational programs to all schools in the peninsula and throughout the South Bay and San Pedro communities, where we strive to cultivate connections uh, to nature for students and the public and for volunteers who want to contribute to the stewardship of these lands. We all share a vision for a natural, protected coastline and a safe, healthy community. In our work to fulfill that vision, the Land Conservancy is launching an initiative we call Go Wild for the Peninsula. We have a $30 million goal that will ensure swift and wide sweeping action to address the threats facing the peninsula's environment today. We know that everyone here on the peninsula and throughout California are concerned about wildfires. So with the community support of the Go Wild for the Peninsula initiative, we'll eradicate non-native vegetation like acacia on these open lands which threaten our communities with potential for wildfire. We will revitalize the healthy ecosystems of the land with native plants for an array of critically imperiled wildlife. Wildlife like the Palos Verdes blue butterfly, the most endangered butterfly in the world. And we will work to reintroduce butterflies to these historic homelands. We will implement this important work throughout the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Today, we recognize and celebrate $19.7 million of public funds that have enabled us to save this land. Generous grants were awarded from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, State Wildlife Conservation Board, the Los Angeles County Regional Park and Open Space District. And we're so pleased to honor and thank these gifts today, and we'll be hearing from um, each organization's representative through the program. I regret Assemblymember Muratsuchi cannot be here to join us today as planned, um, and he sends his regrets. Um, he has to be in, in the state for uh, important business. But uh, we would like to also thank his leadership um, that, and celebrate his support of the environmental initiatives that he is so passionate about on the peninsula. If I might read his quote that he provided. Uh, Assemblymember Muratsuchi says, quote, I'm gratified to see how this project is helping to make the goals of the state's 30 by 30 initiative a reality. The partnership between nonprofits, local government, and resource agencies are all working together to achieve environmental wins that will benefit everyone." End quote. And we agree, and which is why I especially want to recognize and show appreciation to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes in their work to preserve this wildlife corridor, and for their decades-long commitment to protecting the peninsula's environment, and for partnering with the Land Conservancy for so many years in pursuit of the achievements such as the creation of this wildlife corridor. The city's commitment to save the coast was demonstrated by its adoption of the Rancho Palos Verdes Natural Community Conservation Plan and Habitat Conservation Plan. And that ensures that these natural lands will be protected in perpetuity. The conservation of land on which we currently stand, this wildlife corridor, 
further represents the city and conservancy's commitment to conservation and restoration of the lands we all treasure. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, David Bradley. Thank you, Adrian. Well, first of all, I can't, uh, I can't say how exciting it is to be here today. Um, absolutely a beautiful day. Um, the Conservancy could not have laid on better weather for us. Uh, the light breeze is uh, keeping me from uh, melting away, so I appreciate that. Um, no, this is a historic day. Um, I want to thank that uh, our, our partners here uh, from the federal, state, county agencies that have helped this multi-agency um, effort of public-private partnership that's really showing a win, 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 win for the community um, as we're able to put more land into cons uh, conservancy here on the peninsula. We're finally able to get to our 1500 acre goal or almost the 1500 acre, um, which is unprecedented for a city our size. So it is so exciting to work with the conservancy, federal agencies, state agencies, county agencies to be able to pull this um, historic um, um, acquisition together. For over 49 years, um, open space, local control have been some of the founding pillars of our city's incorporation. I want to thank the leadership of uh, prior city councils of the Rancho Palos Verdes, um, as well as our current council. Uh, we have our councilman uh, Eric Alegria here, councilman John Krushank, our mayor pro tem Barbara Ferraro, um, and uh, Councilman Ken Dida, who was one of our city founders, I think is on his way, but it's going to be a little bit late. But it was his leadership in starting the city and helping with our uh, goal of open spaces and local control that really set us up uh, for this historic moment uh, 49 years ago. Um, as we're sitting here on the eve of our 50th anniversary celebration of the founding of the city, it can't be more um, auspicious that we're able to sit here and uh, celebrate the acquisition of the last 96 acres. Um, in 1996, the City Council signed on to create the National Communities Conservation Plan, or the NCCP, and our ha Habitat Conservation Plan, the HCP, to, among other things, preserve the open spaces originally in envisioned during the incorporation of our city. Uh, this is uh, land will be owned by the city, but uh, the given an easement to the conservancy to help with the pr preservation and conservation of this land into perpetuity. Uh, this, you know, once again, really uh, shows how public-private partnerships can really be um, a real success for the community, um, both the uh, the peninsula in general as well as the city of RPV um, have really come together with the conservancy to be able to uh, put these 1,500 acres into cons uh, conservancy as well as uh, create the wildlife corridor from this beautiful area uh, down to the sea, which is spectacular. Uh, the city re residents, the peninsula, and wildlife will all be the beneficiaries today and into the future. There were many players involved in making this acquisition happen uh, from the conservance of uh, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, uh, federal and state wildlife agencies, the county, uh, but I'd like to uh, recognize a couple of the city staff that uh, really helped uh, from the city point of view in the acquisition. Um, uh, Katie Lozanzo, Bill Winder, Ann Laffner, and um, our uh, city attorneys, Al Shire and Winder, who really helped us make sure that we were able to get this um, acquisition over the goal line. Today completes one chapter and opens another. Please help the city, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, restore this land as a wildlife corridor by being part of the Go Wild for the Peninsula campaign. I'm wearing the wildest shirt that I have to celebrate Go Wild for the Peninsula. Um, so for all, all of you out in the community, volunteer if you can. Spread the word within the community. Donate to the cause if you, if you are able. But be sure to go wild for the Peninsula. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And, um and our ongoing commitment to the conservation and in your partnership, so thank you. I'm now honored to introduce Jonathan Snyder, Assistant Field Supervisor with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Thank you, Jonathan.
Hello, everyone. Um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is humbled and proud to have partnered with such an incredi incredible group of visionaries that we have here today. Uh, this group has worked for decades to bring this important conservation project across the finish line. Um, specifically, we'd like to thank our state partners, the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, and the County of Los Angeles, all of whom supported the acquisition of the 96-acre Lower Filiorum property. Um, in addition to our external partners, I'd like to personally thank Mary Beth Wolf from our office, who with tireless efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Tireless efforts to complete the conservation planning process uh, for the Palos Verdes Peninsula and facilitate the protection of this beautiful property. Thank you, Mary Beth. Um, the service regularly engages with a variety of partners to develop and implement innovative conservation planning tools, but regional conservation planning is perhaps our most powerful tool for achieving landscape level conservation planning, um, particularly in areas like the Palos Verdes Peninsula where there are sensitive um, species and, and federally listed species. Um, south of Santa Monica Mountains, almost all of the coastal development areas in Los Angeles County have been developed. But um, the Rancho Palos Verdes Peninsula still supports a substantial area of coastally influenced habitat with species such as the federally endangered Palos Verdes blue butterfly and threatened coastal California gnatcatcher. And it's these resources and these incredible partners that have brought us here today and helped us focus on the regional conservation planning effort. So following completion of the Rancho Palos Verdes plan in 2020, the state in coordination with other partners applied for and received the largest section six grant in 2022, $12.6 million. This funding, along with state, local, and land conservancy donations, directly contributed to the conservation of this beautiful property that you see here today. Uh, these Endangered Species Act grants, which complement completed conservation plans like that for the city, uh, uh, serve as an important and effective mechanism to fund high priority projects that protect species, prevent extinction, promote recovery, and preclude species from being listed in the future. It's a very powerful tool for us. Once again, the service is thrilled to be here today to celebrate the partnerships that resulted in the conservation of this beautiful property that will protect Southern California biodiversity for generations to come. Thank you. Um, and now I would like to introduce um, Ed Pert. And, uh, pardon me, I'm lost myself in this. Um, Ed Pert is the Regional Manager of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Thank you so much, Ed. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today. Good morning, everyone. It's spectacular here. And as the representative for the state here today, I sort of have to at least mention that we've been involved in conservation out here on the peninsula for decades now. So I, I want to just get that out of the way because the most important thing about my comments today are that we couldn't even be involved without all the partnerships that are happening in this project, in this effort. So, um, and I also think that all of us here, probably in today, who either grew up or have lived in Southern California for a long time, we understand that if these places aren't protected on the Southern California coastline, they're going to be gone. You know, we, we all know that. So I want to thank everyone for putting the energy and the effort in to make sure that these places, this place in particular, remains protected forever. Um, and, and to protect those, the habitat, the biodiversity, to allow people to come out here and hopefully enjoy it as well without enjoying it to death, of course, as we all know that happens. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I just want to say thank you for letting us be a part of that. And with that, I just want to thank in particular um, some of our partners, starting with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, who, and I want to thank, um, like the mayor, both the past and present city council members, city officials, staff. Uh, and I also want to just remind people that these efforts are not mandatory for this city. These are completely voluntary, and it's courageous of them to take on these efforts we know how hard it is to make these happen. You have to convince people, cajole people. So thank you so much for all of that. And with that, I just want to say that we really appreciate all these partnerships that we've experienced in the past. We look forward to continuing those in the future. Thank you, everyone. Great work to all of you who did this and made this happen today. Thanks. Thank you, Ed, and for the decades of, of work that you and your team have put to this, too. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Christina Angeles, Administrative Director for the Regional Park and Open Space District of Los Angeles County. Good morning. I'm 
not very coordinated, so I'm going to try this. Uh, good morning. Uh, I represent the Los Angeles County Regional Park and Open Space District. We have been around 30 years. Since our inception in 1992, the Regional Park and Open Space District has awarded $1.3 billion, with a B, not with an M, billion dollars in taxpayer funds to all 88 cities throughout Los Angeles County as well as the unincorporated area, specifically with the aim to acquire and improve parkland and open space for generations to come. In February of this year, the district awarded a total of $26 million in Measure A funding through its Capital Pro uh, Competitive Grant Program. Of the $26 million, $5.7 million was awarded for acquisition-only projects, and of that $5.7, the Conservancy applied through a competitive selection process and received a million-dollar grant, which is what we are celebrating today. The property was identified as a critical wildlife corridor required to ensure the survival of the endangered Pell's Veritas blue butterfly, the most endangered butterfly in Northern America and other protected species. In addition to protecting, sorry. In addition to protecting the blue butterfly, butterfly population, the property will provide the opportunity to expand the habitat for other endangered species. The conservation of this property will ensure that the public and wildlife enjoyment of the land provide long desired trail connections along with preserving important environmental and ecological functions to help enhance the quality of life. In closing, the district would like to thank the Conservancy, the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, the trifecta, we have the county, the feds, and the state all present here today, and all of the partners who helped acquire this property. We are immensely grateful that it will be protected as open space for generations to come. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Christina. And as she said, it is sort of the trifecta. And, and, and with that vision and tying it all together um, with the Land Conservancy's support, pardon me, I think I messed with one of the microphones here. Let me know if I messed up Eddie's microphone. Um, I would be so honored and pleased to introduce Rob Kautz, the president of the board of directors for the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. Thank you, Adrian. And welcome, everyone. This is a little tricky up here. Thank you for being here. Well, is everybody ready now to go wild for the peninsula? The reason we're here today is that we need your help to spread the word. The, wild, the Go Wild for the Peninsula campaign is starting now. So let me hear everyone say it out loud again. Go Wild for the Peninsula. Go Wild for the Peninsula. That was pretty convincing. <laughs> we'll come back and try that again in a minute. I'll give you three very important reasons why you should go wild. And if you don't remember anything else today, Please remember, one, reduce fire risk. Two, save the naturally drought tolerant Palos Verdes ecosystem. And three, protect the beauty of nature on these coastal lands forever. Those are three great reasons to join us, so spread the word and donate what you can. But the need for your help is urgent and critical. And let me explain very briefly. First Go Wild will address fire risk directly with the removal of invasive non-native uh, vegetation. Invasive weeds like the yellow mustard hog the rainfall to grow very quickly, but then die leaving fire-prone stalks. In combination with taller invasive plants, they create a fire ladder that can reach up to larger majestic trees that would otherwise not catch fire from native low-lying grasses and shrubs. The worst offenders are the yellow mustard, which we see everywhere because it has roots that poison the soil around it to inhibit, inhibit native plants from coming back. And acacia trees that contain flammable oils that can spread a wildfire out of control. So first, we need to eliminate the invasive plants, which are a fire risk, and crowd out native species across the peninsula. Very good. Second, we must replace them with a sustainable, naturally drought-tolerant ecosystem that's unique and native to the peninsula. Help us reintroduce an array of native plants that will bring the hills to life with an abundance of songbirds, butterflies, owls, and hawks, gray fox, and other wildlife. We invite parents, students, and everyone to join us through volunteer activities to restore the natural environment, bring native plants into your home gardens, 
So you can go wild for the peninsula right at home. Third, the Go Wild campaign will help the Conservancy ensure the protection of this land and its natural beauty forever. The Conservancy is proud of its role to protect the land under conservation easements for future generations to enjoy in perpetuity. Well, so now is everybody ready to go wild for the peninsula? Yeah. I'll give you three chances. Let me hear go wild for the peninsula. Go, go wild for the peninsula. All right, let's have a second time. Chris asked me, would everybody turn to the cameras for one last cheer? Let's go wild for the peninsula. Go wild for the peninsula. This is a big day in the city's history for the community with this partnership with the Land Conservancy. Go Well for the Peninsula campaign has kicked off to create a 96-acre new wildlife corridor in our city. With all that, um, just your takeaway as a city manager, what this means for the community and how we got here. You know, Liz, this um, means a lot to me. Um, it is a monumental day. It's a milestone for Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, the, the residents, the community of the peninsula, and the wildlife here. But it means so much to me because I, when I first started with the city almost 25 years ago, one of the very first projects I worked on was the development of the, the trail system in the open space area for Forestall. And at that time, there was a vision, and it was a vision to create this um, nature preserve, and that was the first piece in what came after that many years in the making and here we are this is a, this represents the culmination of over two decades of work the fact that this will be a 96 acre habitat corridor what does that mean for the city it's always been envisioned that um, as we were identifying proper properties that would uh, make up the entire preserve this was always in, uh, envisioned as being a wildlife corridor um, an area where the wildlife could get across and and um, not be fragmented by by undivided parcels and so the way this property um, will move forward is is the revegetation of it to provide the habitat for the for the wildlife here and so it's not intended to be for um, significant ac public access it's going to have limited public access it's primarily for the preservation of of the habitat for the wildlife well sometimes things take a long time when i was on the council from 95 to 2003 we acquired the very first property to go into the Palos Verdes Reserve. That was the forest soil property. And now, here we are, seems like a thousand years later, you know, we've acquired this wonderful place, piece for the, play, for the whole place, the whole peninsula to enjoy the vistas. And we had, we, we approved the NCCP, and I was the swing vote. It was a three to two vote. And if I didn't vote in favor, it wouldn't have happened. And I think it's just amazing that here we are and it's taken this long, but to have the federal government participate, the state government, the county, the Land Conservancy, and the city of Rancho Palos all, all come together, it's a miracle. It really is. I mean, this stuff doesn't happen often that you can get all those government agencies to work together and this is you know we had a piece here and we had a piece there this is going to provide that connectivity for the wildlife corridor so that hopefully we can restore the gnat catchers the cactus wren the blue butterfly and the the Palos Verdes blue butterfly and the El Segundo blue butterfly. Uh, this is just such a special day for the city of Ranch Palos Verdes as well as residents throughout really all of LA County and beyond those visitors who come to enjoy this preserve securing this nearly additional hundred acres to conserve this space into perpetuity is just a wonderful day. And I, I think one of the, the themes of today was collaboration. It, it was really neat to hear about sort of cross-governmental and nonprofit agencies, you know, of course our land conservancy, uh, and the way that everyone's worked together to achieve this particular outcome. So um, good teamwork all the way around, and we see the outcome as a result of this, which is gonna really benefit all of us. It has taken a long time to get here, and many things that have happened while I'm on the city council happened, but they were done 
well before I got on the council and we were just fortunate enough to get all the parties together and, and get the thing done. So um, it's an amazing partnership between federal government, state government, county government, uh, and our city of course. And you very rarely hear of any type of partnership and accomplishments with all of those government agencies. I mean, the, the actual acquisition of land is kind of phase one, right? I mean, you, you open up another 100 acres of land and now you've got your work to do. Uh, it doesn't just come right out of the box and ready to go. And so the Land Conservancy has to raise money to get volunteers and to buy all the materials and, and, and that to come up and, and start to preserve this back to its natural habitat, back to the native plants, get out all the old non-native and put in drought tolerant. And also for the city it's very important because now this is another 100 acres of protected area from wildfires. So this is a, a phenomenal day. From when I grew up on the peninsula as a boy, when we moved here in 1972, this is, you know, just the culmination of a dream of preserving the open spaces within Rancho Palos Verdes and the peninsula in general. The fact that the city of Rancho Palos Verdes has almost 1,500 acres under cons conservation is unheard of for a city our size. It is just a phenomenal day that we can work with the federal government, the state government, the county government, and local government, along with the private um, foundation of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, to bring this all together to preserve this 1,500 acres within the city forever is just a tremendous day. And the weather couldn't be beautiful. We're sitting out here on the, uh, overlooking Abalone Cove. It is a spectacular event. I can't be more excited that this council and previous councils have been able to come together to, to put this into conservancy and to make this happen today. All right, so it's time for all of us to go wild for the peninsula. If you want to get involved with the Go Wild campaign, there's the website, gowildpv.org. Congratulations to the Land Conservancy and the city for making this happen. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for joining us.